what you see I will be fulfilling every prophecy Jesus gotta pay for his atrocities Murdering and killing all the kings of my family God got my back, ain't no stopping me We the judges of the earth, you are wanna be Repented of my sins, now it's God in me They gon' see the beams in my eyes, no hypocrisy For all these damn years, I was your slave You don't get no credit, but you gotta pay Wanna bump your lips? I'ma cut them out I put them in your hands, I make you watch your mouth This is what you get for disintegrate When disintegrate with your head, you disintegrate Wicked Babylon, make the sinner great Christ invaded before, miss a piece of cake Hey, shalom brothers, shalom sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is, that's right. It's Shout Out Tuesday. It is Shout Out Tuesday. Please excuse me if I sound a little hoarse today. We were out in the wilderness for several days, or at least I was. <laughs> many of you brothers and sisters are still out there to this day, and many of you staying out there even to the eighth day, all praises. Me and that, that cold air was tearing me up. We was near the river. Well, praise to the Lord. I definitely enjoyed myself, but my son had to get back to his school to go to school. I'm like, oh, gosh. Um, what else was there? I had to come back and do Shout Out Tuesday. Um, the Feast of Tabernacles is an eight-day celebration. Um, it's one of the one of the best high holy days, I think, uh, for us to have. And we were gonna we are going to keep that high holy day from now till the kingdom. And please, brothers and sisters, don't let nobody, don't let nobody tell you that you are uh, contaminating the gospel of Jesus Christ by keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. Don't let nobody do that to y'all. Y'all simple as hell. You get these dumb Christians like my beloved brother, Thomas Dexter Jakes, Jakes and these urban apologetics which means they defend white supremacy. These guys are complete idiots, complete. Listen to me when I say they're complete idiots. They are. They are saying things like keeping God's commandments is a contamination. It is legalism. It is not necessary in Christ. That's not what the Bible says. For example, let's go over to Matthew 19. Now y'all tell me, you tell me, Matthew 19, I'm going to start at verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. What, what does that mean? What does that mean? That grace is all you need. Grace, just grace. Don't listen to these brothers and sisters, bro. The Bible, Christ is the ultimate decision maker. Okay? Let's go to Zechariah 14. Let me show you something about the Feast of Tabernacles. Why are y'all keeping the Feast of Tabernacles? That's legalism. You don't got to do that. We ain't doing that no more in Jesus. All right. Zechariah 14. Let's start at verse um, 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the nations of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So what in the hell 
is you Christian saying? What in the hell is you urban apologetics idiots saying? What in the hell is Thomas Dexter Jakes saying? Y'all are insane in the membrane. Y'all are completely insane in the membrane trying to support white supremacy. But now, let me show you a clip where our beloved brother, Thomas Dexter Jakes, has a complete misunderstanding of the Gentiles once again. Once again! Let's take a look. Four minutes and uh, drop down uh, to uh, verse number 44. Acts 10, verse number 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believe were astonished, those are Jews, they of the circumcision which believe were astonished, uh, 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 were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. They were shocked that God's Spirit would reach over and fill these Gentiles with the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. The only reason that they accepted it is because they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, which was the sign of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And then he says, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Okay, so this is clear. So all of a sudden they have to open up their mind to the fact that, that God is filling these people that heretofore had been considered heathens and dogs and idolaters. And now God is filling them with the Holy Ghost because they heard the word of God. While Peter yet spake these words, they of the uncircumcision, all of a sudden they're shocked because they which heard the word, they received the word, they were filled with the Holy Ghost, not because he laid his hands on them. I'm not sure that Peter would have laid his hands on them because you'll begin to understand that Peter has a little problem with, with this whole thing anyway about Gentiles being converted and being equal and legitimate and so forth and so on. But God didn't give Peter a chance to lay hands. While he was preaching, they started being filled with the Holy Ghost. And he said, well, wow, we cannot deny that they have the Holy Ghost as well as we. That's equality. As well as we. Israel Redivivus. I'm going over to page nine. It may not have occurred to many students of the New Testament what a considerable prominence is given there to the destiny of the Greeks, who are repeatedly referred to as co-sharers with the Jews, with the Jews in the divine favor. For convenience and to avoid the necessity of further reference, it may be as well to quote here these passages. Before doing this, however, it may be observed that the word in our English version rendered Greek or Grecian has not always the same significance in the original text. Wherever the words, well, I can't pronounce this or this, <laughs> occur, let me zoom in, they refer to people of the Greek nation, but occasionally, there's another word, I can't pronounce it, is used. This also is translated Greeks in our version as in Acts 6, verse 1, uh, 9, verse 29, and Acts 11, verse 20. But it means Greek-speaking people who were not Greeks and is supposed to refer generally to Greek-speaking Jews. Do y'all see that? Greek. All right, let's go to page 11. Pay close attention. Peter was at one time at Antioch, Galatians chapter 2, and he is supposed to have preached the gospel in Pontus near the Greek colony of Sinope, in Galatia, Bithynia, and Cappadocia, in Asia Minor, and also in Asia. And his epistle is addressed... According to the Revised Version... To the elect who are sojourners of the dispersion, that is, to the Israelites 
whom we have already identified as inhabiting these very localities under other names. Let's go down. It ain't over. The party ain't over yet. It will, of course, be argued by those who hold the call of the Gentiles theory. The word theory goes back to the word guess. Let's read that again. It will, of course, be argued by those who hold the call of the Gentiles theory that these Greeks were Gentiles to whom the gospel was thus early preached and who became Christians. It has, however, already been shown that this is quite antithetical, meaning opposed to the manner in which the Greeks and Gentiles respectively are referred to in the Acts of the Apostles and in the Epistles. And it is inconsistent. I want you to see that right there. And it is inconsistent with the general tenor of the New Testament to come to any different conclusion than that the Greeks, or, or rather perhaps the upper classes of those who at that time went by the name of Greeks, were other than descendants of some at least of the lost ten tribes. Do y'all see that? The lost ten tribes. So what have I shown you so far? I've shown you T.D. Jakes does not know what in the hell he's talking about. Just like all of Christianity don't know what the hell they're talking about. Just like the urban apologetics don't know what in the hell they talking about. Okay, now the book I read from was published in 1905. This, was pu this book was published in 1905. That's why I always say a lot of the older books are better. Because although they may not put a 100% truth in there, they do put a substantial amount of truth in their writings. So confident that black people would never be able to read and write. <laughs> now, what I wanted to say about the theory of the call of the Gentiles is that it's all bullshit. Bull crap. Excuse me? Bull crap. Right? Bull crap. Bull crap. It's bull crap. The Gentiles, the Bible is making reference to calling, were the Israelites, the 10 tribes of Israel to be specific. Now, you ever notice with Christians, when they read the Old Testament, they may, or that's some of the, the preachers, like when you look at T.D. Jakes, he may mention the 12 tribes of Israel. But when he gets to the New Testament, notice the writing goes from the 12 tribes to when they speak, it's always Jew and Gentile, not realizing that when the Bible talks about Jew and Gentile, Jew makes reference to the kingdom of Judah. Who are the Gentiles? It does not mean God got rid of the other 10 tribes. No, 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 no. I'm saying 10 because Dan was amongst them at this time. No. So what does it mean? It's talking about the Israelites, the, the northern kingdom. Let me show you, for example. <clears throat> Let's go to Matthew chapter 4. I'm just giving you an example. Matthew 4 and verse 15. I'll set it 14. <clears throat> Excuse me. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, Light is sprung up. So now watch this. I'm going to go to Isaiah 9, where the actual quote is, Isaiah 9. But what I want you to see out of that is that they're calling Zebulon and Naphtali Gentiles. All right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon, and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. So who are the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light? Verse one just told you Zebulon and Naphtali, okay? Uh, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. The great light is Christ. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them have the light shine. So I want you to understand there were remnants of all the tribes uh, or majority of the tribes still in the land. A remnant. Notice my wording. A remnant. I'm not saying they were all there because as you read on, especially in the book of Isaiah, they were scattered. Okay. Now, 
So I showed you, now watch, I'm going back to Matthew chapter four. Okay. Um, back to verse fifth. I'll start at 14 again. Matthew four verse, uh, let me see where I want to start. I'll start at 12. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, which it says Isaiah, but it's Isaiah, the prophet saying, the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. So it's letting you know that Zebulon and Naphtali were called Gentiles. The people, because notice it says, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and, sh and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see that? And as you read on um, in the land, you read about Peter being there. And Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So in the land of Naphtali and Zebulon, you had Peter and his brother, okay, which were Jews. Those two were Jews of the tribe of Judah, and they were called by Christ, okay? So I wanted y'all to see that the land of Zebulon and Naphtali was called Galilee of the Gentiles, of the nations. So many times when Christians speak, just as our, TD, our brother T.D. Jakes, just as these stupid apologetic speaks, they will, they will omit in historic speech, biblical speech, the, rep, the 10 tribes of Israel. What happened to them? Oh, nobody knows. They just disappeared. They didn't just disappear. They were called Gentiles because they went into idolatry. You can read about that in the book of Hosea, chapter 1 and chapter 2. You can read it on your own. All right. So what else do I want? James 1. Watch this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was out in that. that There was part during the wee hours of the night when we were feast when we were tabernacle, it was so cold near the river. So, so cold. All right. Where am I going, James? Watch this. James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. So, now remember what we read about earlier. All right, remember uh, in the book I just referenced, it talked about the epistles of Peter. And I want to show you this. First Peter chapter one, verse one. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Who were the elect according to the foreknowledge? Foreknowledge meaning he knew before, meaning the Old Testament. Who was the elect in the Old Testament? Hold on. All right, Isaiah 45, verse 4. I'm going to the foreknowledge now. Who did God foreknow? Who was the elect in the foreknowledge of God? Isaiah 45, verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Why does it say, though thou hast not known me? Because Israel went into idolatry. So, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 again. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Now the question again, who were the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia? Let's go right on back to the reference again, because I know some of you are slow. All right, let's go to page 11. Pay close attention.
Peter was at one time at Antioch, Galatians chapter 2, and he is supposed to have preached the gospel in Pontus near the Greek colony of Sinope, in Galatia, Bithynia, and Cappadocia, in Asia Minor, and also in Asia. And his epistle is addressed, according to the Revised Version, to the elect who are sojourners of the dispersion, that is, to the Israelites, whom we have already identified as inhabiting these very localities under other names. Let's go down. It ain't over, the party ain't over yet. It will, of course, be argued by those who hold the call of the Gentiles theory. The word theory goes back to the word guess. Let's read that again. It will, of course, be argued by those who hold the call of the Gentiles theory that these Greeks were Gentiles to whom the gospel was thus early preached and who became Christians. It has, however, already been shown that this is quite antithetical, meaning opposed to the manner in which the Greeks and Gentiles respectively are referred to in the Acts of the Apostles and in the Epistles. And it is inconsistent. I want you to see it right there. And it is inconsistent with the general tenor of the New Testament to come to any different conclusion than that the Greeks, or, or rather perhaps, the upper classes of those who at that time went by the name of Greeks were other than descendants of some at least of the lost 10 tribes. Do y'all see that? The lost 10 tribes. So again, 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 the people that Paul and Peter and them went to in their epistles and their journeys were Israelites. They did not go to other races. They went to Israelites who were in captivity. Okay, they were colonized by Greco-Roman armies. Okay, and they took on their languages, their customs, their dress. Many of them started to worship other gods. Like, for example, in 1 Corinthians 12, let me just show you that real quick. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Notice it says ye were Gentiles. You were Gentiles. Why? Because the Corinthians were Israelites. When you read chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, watch this. Moreover, brethren, I'm in verse 1, 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did, it, and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Notice he says, brethren, no, more of a brethren, all our fathers were uh, under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses. Were the Greeks, I want you to think, were the Greeks with Moses coming out of ancient Egypt? Were the Greeks with Moses coming out of the wilderness, out of ancient Egypt, into the wilderness? No, those were Israelites, okay? So it's time, it's high time for us to wake out of sleep. Stupidity must come to an end and it's coming to an end. But let's go back to our brother, Thomas Dexter Jakes, one more again. You're talking about worship. You're talking about praise. You're talking about prayer. You're talking about wrestling in the middle of the night. When it comes down to getting rid of the things that you are bond to, it can be the most difficult thing in your life, but it is also the greatest sacrifice and the greatest worship, and it makes room for the children of the promise. Somebody right now that's watching me is grieving over what you lost. Grieving over what you walked away from. But God is saying, put out the bondwoman and her son. Trust me. I am going to make you a child of the promise. Hell no. Till the no, no, no. Hell to the no. Hell to the no. Till the no, 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 no. Hell no, no. Till the no, no. No, 
no, no, no, no. Did he say trust me? Did Thomas Dexter Jenks say to trust him? This is what the Bible says, folks. Jeremiah <clears throat> chapter 9, verse 4. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders, and they will deceive every one his neighbor, and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Wow. Wow. So Thomas Dexter Jakes tells us to trust him, that he will make us a child of the promise. Impossible. Impossible. Who are the children of the promise? Watch this. Romans 9. Romans chapter 9. Who are the children of the promise? Now, everybody go with me to Romans 9, and let's just start at verse 4. Who are Israelites, to whom pertain, if the word pertaineth means belongs to. Verse 4 again, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises, and the promises. So who do the promises pertain to? Israelites. Israelites only. It does not pertain to Edomites. The promises do not pertain to Ishmaelites. The promises do not pertain to Hamites or Jebusites or Amorites or Moabites or Ammonites. You can't make this stuff up. Thomas Dexter Jakes, stop the blood clot lion. Let's go on with the foolishness. Let's keep on looking at the What's What's going to do and say? As we come to the close of this Bible class, there's a few things I hope that you get out of this. One, I hope I was effective at helping you to understand the dilemma of the early church is not to allow their past understanding of God to contaminate this great move that happened on Calvary. That the blood of Jesus was enough. Mount, Mount Calvary is stronger than Mount Sinai. I hope you understand that being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, that God no longer needed the shadows and types of the Old Testament, which only came to teach us about New Testament truth. The reason I hope you understand that is because our foundation as Christians is so weak that anybody can come and teach us anything, and we say amen to everything because we don't rightly divide the word of truth. So I hope you understand that. That's important. It's important for you to understand your faith to the degree that you understand that, 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 that God's grace is enough, that Calvary is enough, that Jesus' perfect sacrifice is enough, that you don't have to pollute it or dilute it with Mount Sinai in order to understand that you are accepted in the beloved that the grace of God has been given to you freely. Does that mean for you to be irresponsible? Absolutely not. It just means that you're no longer bound to the bondwoman according to the flesh. But we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of the promise. I hope you understand that. No, nobody's understanding nothing you say, Thomas Dexter Jakes. And people are saying amen in your sermon, to your sermons, because they want to feel good. But you're lying to them. You are lying to the people. You made a statement about not polluting or diluting uh, the grace of the Lord with Mount Sinai. You said not to pollute or dilute Mount Calvary with Mount Sinai. You don't understand Galatians 4, T.D. Jakes. You don't understand. But, bruh, bruh, if you want to understand Galatians chapter 4, Let's give a brother a call. I'll give you the answers. I'll tell you exactly what the metaphor means. Because listening to you, and it was long, that's why I'm not posting it. It was totally ridiculous the way you explained it. You made um, Mount Sinai seem like uh, when it said cast out the bond woman, which represented the old covenant laws of animal sacrifice. You made it so vague and as if it was all of God's laws and commandments were to be cast out. And that's why a lot of black sons 
and daughters are in gangs, incarcerated on drugs, thieves, liars, prostitutes, child molesters, because of brothers like you. Teaching us that God's laws have done away with it. That's you, T.D. Jakes. That is you. And you said, am I telling you to be irresponsible? Absolutely not. But you are, Blanche. But you are. So you just try to be slick, but you're not really slick. And you don't know the Bible at all. Now, don't take it offensive, T.D. Jakes. Just listen to me and I can help you out. Okay? You went to, you spent all that money with the white mass theology schools and you learned nothing. You didn't learn that Christ is a black man. You didn't learn that you're an Israelite. You didn't learn that our people went into slavery for breaking God's commandments. According to Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68. You haven't figured that one out yet. You're busy telling people you can make them children of the promise. Brother, you can't make nobody a child of the promise. It goes by ancestry, all right? Oh, did I say something wrong? Let me prove what I said. Leviticus, watch this prophecy. Watch this, bear with me. Y'all follow along, you can bear witness that I'm telling you the truth. Leviticus 26 and verse 45. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors. You see that? When, whom I have brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen that I might be their God, I am the Lord. Leviticus 26 is prophetic. But the Lord says near the end here, but I will for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors. Very important, never taught in church, never taught, never taught. Okay, so what about, uh, you said, uh, you mentioned grace, T.D. Jakes. You did mention grace. See, go to Romans 6, everybody, go to Romans chapter 6. It reads, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? The first thing you need to understand regarding sin is what is it? What is sin? Let's go to 1 John. Come on. Chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. That's what sin is. When you break God's commandments, that's sin. When you break God's laws, that is sin. Back to Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. That means no. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So we're supposed to be dead to sin. Meaning what? Dead to breaking God's commandments. Meaning stop breaking God's commandments. Now, what part of the law was cast out? What part of the law was done away with? That's always the age-old question. Well, at least in this generation. Let's read along. Let's go along to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10, let's start at verse 8. Above, when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not. Neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. What law? The sacrificial laws. Verse 9. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first. What does that mean? He taketh, he taketh away the first covenant of animal sacrifice, that he may establish the second. What is the second? The next verse explains. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So, the only part of the law done away with were those laws that pertained to animal sacrifice. Ask yourself a question. Can we steal? Can we kill one another? Can, can we dishonor our mother and father? Should, can we worship other gods? If you have any sense, you'll understand the answer is no. So what part of the law was done away with? The sacrifices, the animal sacrifice, that's it. And what, what pertained to that? You, you had to go to the Levites, sacrifice in the temple. Those were death, that was, the temple's been destroyed. So why are you sitting around, you lying Christians telling people not to keep God's commandments. This is why your sons and daughters are prostitutes, 
child molesters, adulterers, liars, thieves, robbers, and murderers. That's why. Liars. That's why. Because of the black church, you've done us a disservice. And it's time you either repent or it's time for the black church to go down. Okay, I'm telling you the truth. Now, let's get into a little history. Let's get into a little history regarding the identity of us and our ancestors. Pay close attention. All right. A textbook of the origin and history, etc., of the colored people, 1841, James W. C. Pennington. All right, so this book was published originally in 1841. I'm going to page 96. Watch this. Let's zoom in. A stronger case still is to be found in the fact that the descendants of a colony of Jews originally from Judea to the coast of Africa are black. Do y'all see that? Do y'all see that? <laughs> All right. The Critical Review or Annals of Literature by Society of Gentlemen. Let's see what year this was published. 1783. 1783. 1783. <laughs> Let's go to page 141. And I want to read this paragraph here for these dumb Christian apologetics that says, uh, white Jews were banished from Spain and made slaves in Africa. Let's start here from King John II, shall we please? King John II in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas. That's an island off the west coast of Africa. So the question is, whether black or white Jews? Which had been discovered in 1471, meaning the island of St. Thomas had been discovered in 1471, and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. And from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called, and the Jews in Loango, who are despised even by the very Negroes, are descended. Meaning the Jews in Loango are the same people as the Negroes, but there was a hatred from the Negroes regarding these upper class Jews. That's what they were. So my point was that the Jews that was banished to Africa in 1492, it says that from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese as they are called, and the Jews in Loango. So the Jews that were banished to Africa from Spain, from Portuguese, Portugal, excuse me, <laughs> were black Jews. <laughs> All right, the Nautical Magazine and Naval Chronicle, January 1870. This was published, 1870. All right, let me make sure that was the right year. Yep, 1870. I'm going to page 529. I'm going to start here. Which led the Roman Catholic missionaries who labored here during the 16th and 17th centuries to the conclusion that they had found black Jews in Loango. Y'all see that? Black Jews in Loango. That's in Africa. Barbeau states that in the reign of Don John II, as King John II, and about the close of the 15th century, that's around 1497, somewhere around there, large numbers of Jews were expelled from Portugal and taken to the coast of Southern Guinea, that the island of St. Thomas, that's on the west coast of Africa, which is not more than 100 miles from the mainland, was populated by mulattoes descended from the Jewish exiles and Anglo women. So these black Jews had sex with white women. They were called, and their children were called mulattoes. Now let's jump down. I'm gonna just start at uh, the, uh, the Roman Catholic. The Roman Catholic missionaries at Luango had not detected this circumstance instead of regarding them as a pure African family of Jews, referring to the descendant, those mulattoes. Okay. 
It is important to remark, however, that those families in Africa cannot be fairly estimated by such specimens of the nation as have been brought to America for the subjects of the slave trade. So these same people were taken to America during the slave trade. Some of you may have never even heard of Luango. Some of you have, some of you may have not. But what you didn't know that you know now is, is that black Jews were um, expelled from Portugal to Luango, which is in Africa. And now let's look at some news briefs on Luango. <music> Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to this travel segment. For those interested in African civilization and history, Luango often refers to the kingdom that existed at the turn of the 15th century and which extended along the Atlantic coast between Cape Lopez and Zaire over what is now the southwestern Republic of Congo and southern Gabo to the Kabinda enclave in Angola. A pre-colonial civilization complete with an economic, military, artistic and cultural structure unique from the rest of the world. The kingdom of Luango was a vassal of the Congo kingdom, a powerful Bantu kingdom in Central Africa before it broke away at the end of the 15th century. But away from being a culturally, a culturally rich civilization, Luango also has its dark page that links it to the history of humanity, that of slave trade that began with the triangular trade in the 18th century. Triangular because the traffic involved three continents, Europe, from which manufactured goods left for Africa, and Africa, which provided labor and therefore slaves to the Americas to work in the sugar cane and cotton fields, and very quickly we will switch to what is now called the trade in righteousness, that is to say directly from Africa to the Americas without going through Europe. Contrary to popular belief, which presents West Africa as the main port of exit for slaves, more than 44% of all the slaves exported to the Americas actually set off from the coasts of Central Africa and a total of more than 8 million set off from Luango Bay, which is huge on a continental scale at that time. Christ in John 8, verse 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All I can do is offer you the truth, brothers and sisters. That's my job. Whether you take it or not, it's up to you, but I would suggest that you really consider what I'm saying, what I'm showing you, what I'm proving to you, okay? Uh, and share this video. Share all our videos, okay? Share, share, share. So what I want y'all to take from today's brief but very important lesson is that um, we the Israelites, we are the true children of the promise. And we're scattered worldwide. We're the children of the slave trade. We have we are the those who have been colonized by European powers. We're the Israelites. Okay, regardless of what anybody says, I don't care how often they cry on stage, I don't care how how, how bad they sweat, it don't mean a hill of beans to me, especially don't mean a hill of beans to the Lord. We are the Israelites, the Bible speaks of. And guess what? We went into slavery. Why? Because we broke. God's commandments. Read it. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68. Leviticus 26. Read the whole chapter. Okay? But our day of redemption is coming. Christ did redeem us from those curses in Galatians 3. It explains that. Galatians 3 around verse 10 to 13. Um, and on his second coming, we will be delivered and there shall be no more curse. Watch this. Let me just show you. Revelation 22. And verse one, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Y'all can see the breakdown to this on um, the IUIC Sabbath lesson I did entitled Revelation 22. I believe that's the name of it. Verse two, in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month meaning her understanding, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse. And there shall be no more curse. What curse? Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68. It's going to be finished. It's going to be over. And we give all praises to the Most High. We give all praises to the Lord. Okay, you know how I like to do. 
Let's get to the reading of the shout out letters and shout out donations. And in case you're wondering about what the leaves of the tree are, which are for the healing of the nations, that's why at the beginning of the lesson, I talked about keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. And it said in Zechariah 14, we read from verse 16 down, that if Egypt does not keep come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles and to worship the king, there shall be no rain on Egypt. And what does that mean? Death. And it said, and it shall be the plague upon all nations that keep not the Feast of Tabernacles. So that's just an example when the Bible says in Revelation 22 that the leaves of the tree shall be for the healing of the nations. So every month we're going to bring out what celebration, high holidays there are, and all nations will be forced to keep it. I bet you Thomas Dexter Jakes will never teach you that. The urban apologetics will never teach you that. Woo! Okay, let's get to it. All right. Uh, the shout outs. Look what I got here in the mail. All praises. Thank you for all the kindness you bring to the world. This is from Sister Dorothy M. Dorothy M. And she's from the tribe of Benjamin. All praises to the Lord. She writes, Bishop, I can't thank you enough for bringing the understanding of the scriptures to the world of, the, of Israel. Also our true history. May Most High God bless you and your family and the congregations worldwide. Dorothy, all praises. Thank you, Dorothy. You know, I thought people stopped. I was told people stopped using cards, but I'm so glad you proved them wrong because I do appreciate these cards. Thank you so much. All right, this next one is from Brother Jerry R. Jerry R., that's your handwriting right there. It reads, Shalom Bishop Nathaniel. <laughs> you spelled my name wrong, but it's okay. In my last letter, I asked you to explain Genesis 15, 13. Now I understand it. Thank you. And I want you to know that I don't follow the teachings of BBOH group. BBOH. I don't know what BBOH is, but okay. IOIC is the only spiritual group I follow. Uh, I was wondering if you have knowledge of this sister named Dr. Joy DeGru. Yes. Uh, Dr. Joy DeGru is a sister who is a history major, especially in black history. She um, She's very heavy, very, very heavy in her understanding of what our people have gone through and the cycle, something that, I don't even know the word, uh, regarding, uh, what is it called? Slave, slave, mm, PTSD, post-traumatic slave disorder, something like that she goes into. But yes, I am familiar with her. I had a chance to listen to a seminar she gave at a college. The seminar was titled Empathy for the Black People in America. I got a lot out of it. Take a look, if you will. Yes. In closing, I have this saying. When you see the American flag coming, run or take cover or be ready to fight or lie or be lied to. That's right. That's funny. Last but not least, I it would be nice to have bumper stickers made with IUIC logos of a black Jesus, Ten Commandments, the Twelve Tribes, and the Menorah. Yes. One of our schools did do that, dang, but they haven't done it in a while. Um, P.S. This gift is from a student of gratitude to a spiritual leader slash teacher. It's a teacher's blackboard telescoping point. Yes, I, yes. All praises to the Lord. Thank you so much. You can use it teaching from maps. All praises. Thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you. Shalom and stay in the spirit. In my arms. All praises. Thank you so much. All praises. All right. All right. This is from J. Vaughn. Simple, small letter. J. Vaughn, thank you. All praises. This is from Brother E. Brother E. Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel. All praise to the Most High God. Just a few words of thanks to IOSC for bringing the truth of God's words. The people really need to hear you guys, so don't stop. Stay safe, stay blessed, stay in the spirit. Brother E, I'm an Israelite. I ain't black no more. Don't call me black no more. All praises. Thank you so much, Brother E. Thank you. Uh, this one is from Brother Charles. I've got quite a lot of brothers today. Oh, and yeah, I'm still kind of hoarse. Oh, Lord. Being out there in the wilderness, I'll tell you. All praise to the Most High. Shalom, Bishop, and all leadership. 
As always, continually giving thanks to the Most High for sending his prophets to bring his word to, to one as unworthy as me. His mercy is everlasting. Until next time, thank you, Most High in Christ. Bless Brother Charles. Thank you, Brother Charles. And guess what? None of us are worthy. All praises. This is from, is that saying Mia? You know, I know that's a sister. What does that say? Mia S? I think it's Mia. Shalom, just a little something to help the campaign. All praises. Is that Mia? I think that's Mia. All right. And this is from, open it, it's folded. This is from Bob, brother Isaac and his wife, Rebecca. Uh, this donation is sent courtesy of um, his trucking business, all praises, to assist with taking the gospel to the four corners of the world. Thank you, Isaac and Rebecca. Thank you. All praises to the Lord. Uh, this is another one from Isaac and Rebecca. All praises. Thank you so much. All praises. Uh, this one is from, who is this? Diane. Diane C. In Abbeville, Georgia. All praises. She, let me hold it up. This is it. All praises to the Most High. Hello, Brother Bishop Nathaniel, and to all deacons at IOSC, including all the IOSC soldiers around the world. I'm so very grateful to the Most High and the Savior for the teaching of the truth and knowledge of our Bible. I have learned a lot. I was aware of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and Revelation chapter 1, verse 13 to 15, but I didn't know the slaves were the true Jews. Now I'm confused. How did you know Christ was black? How did you know the curses of Deuteronomy 28 and not connect the dots? I guess the Lord def definitely had to open your mind to that. Yes, but I understand. Um, I didn't know that the slaves were the true Jews, that we are the people of God. Now I know, and it's good to know, why we suffer the curses. I have followed IUIC for six years. Thank you all, Diane. Thank you, Diane, for that letter. All praises to the Lord, an honest letter. Uh, Mary Simeon, all praises. Shalom, Bishop, and leadership. I just want to say thank you for sending prayers to me. My health is much better. Here, I send my loyal and faithful donation. Keep up the excellent work for the Most High. Lord's well, I keep up my donations. Most High in Christ, bless. Please continue to pray for me. Thank you. Sis, sign Mary, the Jersey Jew. All praise to the Lord, Mary. All praises. Thank you so much. And yes, we're going to continue to pray for you. Mm -mm -mm. All right. This is from Derek S. Talk quite a few brothers today. Derek S. Shalom, most high in Christ. Bless. I thank I thank God for this truth and that you keep my family in your prayers. Yes. Because I know the Lord, hear the prayers of the righteous. Thank you for making sense of the Bible. Uh bless all of IUIC. Put me on prayer list. Yes. Derek, yes, sir. All praise to the Lord. Thank you. Dorothy W. Dorothy W. wrote, thank you and may God be with you all. On a big yellow piece of paper. Thank you, Dorothy. All praise. All right. Oh, I see a two-letter page here. Y'all know how I feel about two-letter pages, but she skipped. Is it a she? Yes. Annie S. Her name is Sister Hadassah Bat Israel. Annie S. Uh, here, here. Look what she wrote at the opening. It's Shout Out Tuesday. It is Shout You know, I can't even shout right now. And, and I want you to see I the mail. Look, the date on Annie's letter. That's last month. I, we just got it. The mail is jacked up, y'all. So if I didn't get you this week, Lord's will I get you next week. All right. Shalom, Bishop, most high in Christ. Bless. I pray you're in good health. I am, but my throat is a little sore. So I got to, I'm drinking my tea right now. Ginger tea. 
All right, I pray you're in good health when this letter reaches you. All praise to the Most High for the great leadership of IUIC. This is my second Shout Out Tuesday letter. On the last letter, I mentioned to you that I was sick. And because I'm up in age at 71 years old, and if it be the Lord's will, I will be 72 years in September. Well, this is September now. So Lord's will, you have become 72, Lord's will. I ask that you and the leadership continue to pray for me that the Lord will have mercy upon me and all of our people that are afflicted in our bodies. I didn't mention that I've been with IUIC uh, Detroit camp at the first school over five years with Captain Ezra. Shout out to Captain Ezra in Detroit, all praises. The sisters have been a help and a blessing. I'm sending blank to help in this truth and in your travels. Don't forget to pray diligently for me. Yes, ma'am. For the fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. My phone number is, I will, I'm going to definitely put this letter to the side and reach out. All praises. All right. This is from, this is from, oh, your name is at the beginning of the letter. Uh, my name is Dwight P. That's the last initial, Dwight P. I've been watching the IOIC videos since March of this year. The teaching from you and the brothers have helped me to find the truth and gradually change my outlook of, on God and these religions that are set up to keep us down and, and farther away from serving our God the correct way. May God continue to pour out his spirit on you and the rest of the leadership. Most High in Christ bless you. Here are some alms. Please use where you see best. Thank you, Dwight. All praises to the Lord. Thank you so much. All right. And last but not least, this is from Sophia, last initial S. Sophia, last initial S is the handwriting. And this too is dated August. Wow. Dear Bishop, I hope these few lines reach you in the best of health. Thank you for your teaching. I have I have been watching you a long time to make sure you are teaching the truth, all praises, and before giving my alms. May Yah bless you and keep you and your family in the best of health. With all my thanks, Sophia, you make my teeth white. All praises, all praises to the Lord, all praises. Thank you, sister. Thank you so much. All right, so... We want to give a shout out to, uh, this is Sophia. Yep, this is Sophia S. Uh, we want to give a shout out to Jerry R. Thank you, Jerry, all praises. We want to give a shout out to Tonya R. Thank you, Tonya. We want to give a shout out to Carolyn M. Carolyn, last initial M. All praises. We want to give a shout out to Sheila K and Jada R. Thank you so much. We want to give a shout out to Eric M. Thank you, Eric. Shout out to Jay Vaughn. Jay Vaughn, thank you. We want to give a shout out to Beulah T. All praises and Beulah T again. All praises. Thank you so much. We want to give a shout out to Sandra B. Sandra, last initial B. Thank you so much. We want to give a shout out to Charlie W. Jr. Charlie W. Jr. Thank you so much. All oh, praises. We want to give a shout out to uh, Clashus. Clashus or Classius. Last initial A. All oh, praises. We want to give a shout out to Tehila. T E H I L A. Tehila. Tehila. I. All oh, praises. Thank you so much. Uh, shout out to Charles and Mina N. Charles and Mina N. All praises. Shout out to Mia S. Last initial S. Thank you, Mia. We want to give a shout out to Charles L. Thank you, Charles. Shout out to Gwen R. Thank you, Gwen. Shout out to Gwen R. Again, all praises. All praises. Shout out to Dave and Katrina P. Dave and Katrina, thank you. Uh, shout out to, um, this is Isaac and Rebecca from you personally and from your 
uh, Trucking Company. All praises. Thank y'all so, so much. All praises. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Sheila K again and Jada R again. All praises. Shout out to Diane C. Diane C of Abbeville, Georgia. Shout out to Diane C of Abbeville, Georgia. All praises. Shout out to Dorothy M. Dorothy M. All praises to the Lord. Thank you. Shout out to Samuel E. Samuel E. All praises. Uh, shout out to Stephen B. and Algie G. That's Stephen B. and Algie G. All praises. Thank you all so much. J.V. Tujmal. Thank you so much, J.V. All praises. Mary Simeon. All praises. Thank you. Shout out to Charles L. Thank you. Shout out to Derek S. Thank you. Shout out to Ernest G. Jr. Thank you so much. Shout out to Dorothy W. Thank you, Dorothy. All praises to the Lord. Shout out to Annie S. Thank you, Annie. Thank you. All praises. Shout out to Annie is that Annie? Yes, that's Annie S again. Thank you so much. Shout out to Carlton K. Thank you, Carlton. Shout out to Gregory H. Thank you, Gregory. All praises. Shout out to Linda, middle initial A, last initial H. Linda, thank you so much. All praises. Uh, shout out to Patrick, middle initial G, last initial M. Thank you so much. Um, and last but not least, we want to give a shout out and thank you to Dwight P. Dwight P. of Newark, New Jersey. Thank you so much. Hey, brother, sis, I wish I had more strength, but my voice is, 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 is tense. It's pulling. Being up in the wilderness near the river, freezing. Oh, Lord, y'all. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about because you were with me. But all praises, y'all pray for me, please. All praises to the Lord. Y'all know how I love to say, let's stay healthy, stay focused, stay faithful. But most of all, let's all of us stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ, bless you all. Love you. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth